Lacrosse community. My name's Ryan Burns. I'm the founder of the Lacrosse Leadership Institute. It's our mission to empower all those that love lacrosse, to recognize the skills that you gain from the sport, to ultimately live the life of your dreams. Today, we're so fortunate to be joined by the Silva family. Now, they've all done excellent on the lacrosse field at a collegiate level, level, and then we also get an opportunity to listen to a Denver outlaw, which is really exciting. But these men have also served our country, so thank you all for that service. I'm so excited to hear where this leadership conversation goes. And for starters, Adam, can you please share how you got involved in lacrosse, and then we'll go down the line and hear each of your perspectives on how you got into lacrosse and where you are today. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Um, and again, forgive my voice as I'm recovering here today. But, uh, you know, I, I picked up a lacrosse stick in the seventh grade uh, in, in, at Fort Meade, Maryland, um, without a youth program or anywhere to play. I just saw some guys in my neighborhood that uh, always seemed to have sticks in their hands. So I spent my birthday money one year and bought a lacrosse stick. And uh, two years later, tried out for the Meade High School uh, lacrosse team. And it was that day that I met a man named Tommy Singleton. Uh, who ended up playing at Loyola, um, who had a phenomenal career, still very involved in the game to this day. And Tommy gave me my first long pole uh, when I tried out for defense with a short stick uh, on the first day of tryouts. And that was literally the beginning of what I would say has been the most uh, impactful thing that any one man has ever given me. Um, and Tommy gave me that gift. And it, I think it changed my life uh, and the life, the lives of my, my sons and daughter and uh, nephews and uh, as they say, the rest is history. So cool. And, and Miles, can you pick up this story then from there? And how, how'd you get involved in the <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I think I had a stick in my hands from the time I was, you know, a baby because uh, of my dad. Uh, but I didn't start playing organized lacrosse until um, probably the sixth grade. I think I played soccer and baseball and football leading up to that. And then finally, I decided to, to pick up a stick um, in a league and there's just a local league and um, we we're fortunate enough to have uh, a lot of um, coaches from around the country who had since relocated so I learned the game from a lot of different people and then obviously my dad was a great resource so um, after that you know picked up my stick uh, playing there and then played for Ponte Vedra High School and eventually West Point and, and still playing uh, professionally now so. Awesome Miles thank you so much and Max we, we can't leave you out of the conversation can you share how you felt like you got involved with lacrosse and also share your experience right now as you play. Yes, I, I am in the same boat as Miles. I think I've had a stick in my hand since as long as I can remember. Um, I was fortunate enough to start playing competitively a little bit earlier. Um, my parents put me into the youth program a little bit earlier and I've, I fell in love with it immediately. Um, I played in, at Ponte Vedra High School and then I moved to um, St. Mary's High School in Annapolis. Um, I'm now at the Naval Academy Preparatory School uh, where I'll be going to the Naval Academy next year. And it's definitely the biggest thing in my life right now is lacrosse. So. Awesome, Max. And, and Max, for you, do you have a pinnacle lacrosse moment or something that just really sticks out when you think back at your lacrosse time so far? Um, I'd say, well, definitely catch in the front yard um that's the the thing that sticks with that I can't think about lacrosse without thinking about how it all started and playing with my dad and my older brother outside in our front yard learning how to push and pull with the top hand and bottom hand and everything that 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 created in the future that's definitely the biggest thing uh that's ever happened to me in lacrosse oh my gosh that puts the biggest smile on my face uh, uh, Adam, I want to hear from you. What's what's your pinnacle lacrosse moment? Well, you, you'd probably think, you know, having played at Army uh, with some pretty good good guys and some good teams and uh, having I, I've been able to watch both my sons win an Army-Navy game in overtime, uh, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, Miles' last Army-Navy game in 2019, they won, I believe it was 9-8 to eight in Annapolis. Got a chance to watch Max um, you know, through Facebook, which was difficult with COVID, uh, but got a chance to watch them uh, go up to my alma mater and uh, take one from uh, MAPS in overtime. Uh, but I'd also have to say that two of the pinnacle moments for me were watching my daughter uh, play lacrosse in uh, two consecutive state championship title games here in the state of Florida, uh, both as a freshman and as a sophomore. 
And uh, that was really cool uh, as a father, you know, as a proud girl dad, uh, and as the husband of a West Point grad as well. Uh, my wife was the captain of the volleyball team at Army. So to watch our little girl compete in two state championship games was, uh, was a pretty special moment for me as a father. I can imagine that's so impactful being able to see uh, the, the boys be very successful, your, your daughter as well, which is so neat. Yeah. Uh, Miles, I want to throw the question to you as well. What's your pinnacle across moment? Um, probably that 98 victory uh, down in Annapolis in 2019. Um, you know, growing up, obviously looking up to my dad and his teammates, uh, finally winning that Army Navy game was something pretty special. And then probably a close second, if not a tie, was winning uh, the Patriot League championship that same year uh, against Lehigh. So that was that was, that was, that was pretty great. Well, thank you guys for sharing all the different perspectives you have on those pinnacle moments. I, I'm sure you have memories that will fill books and books. Uh, but I do want to shift gears a little bit to the, the premise of this conversation and, and talk about leadership. Miles, could you share what leadership means to you? Yeah, so I, I wrote a, a few things down leading up to this. Um, and I have a unique perspective uh, having my dad. One of his passions is, is coaching leadership. So I grew up with that. Um, but also being, you know, active duty army officer, I, I get a unique perspective with that as well. And I think it means to me um, providing a, a purpose, direction, and motivation uh, for the people that you're you're leading. And so not necessarily micromanaging them um, and telling them what they need to do every day, but kind of creating an environment where you give them a purpose, not just, you know, the goal that you need to accomplish, but a feeling of purpose um, a direction. So you give them your left and right limits and, and tell them, you know, go out and execute. And then the motivation um, to do, you know, accomplish the different th tasks or, or goals you have, have set out. And so um, kind of just empowering them to feel like they're making a difference or, or excelling in what they're doing. Um, and then just leading into one other thing is uh, anytime you step into a leadership role, um, get, getting to know your people and establishing trust first and foremost um, allows you to, you know, be the type of leader that you want to be. So. Well, so I love what you're talking about in terms of the, the boundaries, in terms of what's the left and right boundary that someone can work within, but then empowering them to be successful and, and really take that on their own and have that own accountability aspect of that. Can you share a little bit more about in your own life, some of the leadership roles that you've had maybe on the lacrosse field and how it's translated to where you are now? Um, so I guess my first leadership role on the lacrosse field was being a team captain in high school. Um, and that was unique. Anytime you're leading your peers, uh, that's a unique experience and a unique challenge. And so um, you, it's hard to kind of toe the line in, in determining how you want to come across because while you do hold that leadership position, it is still your peers. And so that was probably my first. And then second um, is just basically – being a, a, a member of the Army lacrosse team in any capacity is, is a leadership role in itself. And I, while I wasn't a captain at West Point, the whole senior class um, each year is on, like they're the, the team leaders. And so um, it's a unique experience being there um, because while there is a, you know, a, a, a rank system, I guess, in place with the academy, it's you don't treat it like that because um, – you, you won't motivate people to, you know, follow your lead if you're just telling them because of the title that you hold. So you have to kind of live it and you have to show it whether or not you have a C on your chest or whether you don't. Um, everybody is a leadership. Uh, everybody is a leader and has a leadership role. I, I think that's a big thing to, to really promote is everyone's a leader in their own respect. You don't need a title to be a leader. Ultimately, it's what you do by example, what you ask of others. And if, if there's a level of respect and character, I think that's where you get the most out of people. Uh, mm -hmm. Max, I want to throw the question to you. What does leadership mean to you? Uh, leadership to me, um, I thought about this before when, when, uh, before we got on here. And I thought uh, the first thing that came to my head was being able to, to be led before you become a leader. Um, I always, I'm in the like in the infant stages of my time at the Naval Academy and in the Navy and playing lacrosse at the collegiate level. And um, so I'm learning right now how to fail, how to be led. And the, the leaders that have been put in front of me while here have, have showed me what, what a real leader is like. And so I think the biggest, the, 
like the biggest step into becoming a good leader is to learn how to be led and then finding out what led you the right way and using that to lead your peers as well. I think that's an interesting perspective when you talk about uh, learning yourself. And I think that's part of empathy, understanding what your background is and how what people say affects you. That way, when you start to speak to others, you know how that will affect them and it, you can learn from people's mistakes or learn from their greatness. Uh, but you talked about, Max, being able to fail and being able to learn from those. Can you share a little bit more about what you've been doing in terms of learning to be led at this point in your life? Absolutely. Um, the, this school, is, it's, they warned us since the day we got here, they, they teach you how to fail. Um, and I, I definitely, I haven't had any, I, I've had my fair share of failure while I've been here. And um, I've, I, every single time I look back at it, um, they were opportunities for me to become better as a uh, midshipman candidate or a future midshipman. And um, just to be able to lead. Um, I was also given the opportunity to be in a leadership position here. Um, and our whole lacrosse team has been in a leadership position as well. And we've just learned so much this, this year, especially um, being led as, as a way to become leaders. And, and Max, last question before we, we pop up to everyone else or go to, over to your dad. I, I know that resiliency is such a big thing and grit with everything that we all do. I, I'd love to hear what's keeping you motivated right now or, or what really is like fueling your motor as, as you take on so many new opportunities and, and this challenge of the Navy and lacrosse together. So uh, a, a lot of things, that, there's a lot of things here that uh, motivate me. Um, one of the biggest things is every day we, we wake up right in the, by like 5.20 in the morning, we go out and form up in Looney Plaza, which is a, uh, a plaza named after Brennan Looney. Um, a SEAL who passed away, who played Navy lacrosse. And um, just being out there, uh, just taking a moment to like realize the, the, the place that you're in and uh, how important it is, is definitely something that, it, it's just something that you can't really get anywhere else. And we, it's just one of those things that we hold pretty close to our heart. Um, also, using your friends, your peers, your, your teammates to get through the hard times. Um, Cause we, everybody here has had probably one of the hardest times of their lives and one of the, the best days of their lives as well. And using your teammates is definitely the thing that gets you through it. I think that's such a unique thing about anything that we do, but that team camaraderie, you can ultimately reach new highs. And when you go down to a low, they can pick you up and let you rebound even faster. So Max, thanks for sharing that perspective. Uh, Adam, I'd love to hear, what does leadership mean to you? Well, to me, it's, it's uh, kind of over the years. And I, I'd like to tell you that I was a, a great leader who fully got it and did it for the right reasons when I was in my son's shoes. Uh, I, that would be far from the truth. Uh, for me, it's boiled down over the last several decades to a pretty simple concept, which is to love and serve others in pursuit of a cause greater than self. It really, that, that to me is, is what it comes down to. And uh, it doesn't mean that I need to be under the spotlight or in charge or blowing the whistle or at the center of the huddle. Uh, it's figuring out simple, you know, uh, ways to basically give of yourself so that, you know, a group can, can be greater. And uh, that to me is what it's really all about. And Adam, what, what comes up for me is ultimately allowing your team to reach their full capacity. Uh, empowering others to ultimately do something they never thought was possible. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you get the credit as a leader. It's just doing the things that allows them to do that. Uh, can you share a little bit, Adam, about how you go about being the, the best leader possible and how you've instilled that in the teams you've coached, your sons as well, most specifically? Yeah, I, I think it comes back down to the relationships, you know, and um, I, I was really blessed several years ago to work with uh, Coach Petromala and the Hopkins group. Um, up at Homewood, and, and I thought going in that I was going to have this amazing impact on the players. Um, and, and I'd like to think that I, I left something there, but uh, the real relationships that I was able to develop were with the coaching staff, specifically with Dave. Um, and, and it was un, an unbelievable experience. And, and it really just starts with that, that small group of people that you're able to influence the most and have influence you the most. 
And so for me, it really comes down to those relationships. And, you know, it's hard when you're on a team of 55 or 60 people. Um, and so to me, you just start small and, you know, let those ripples start to go out away from you. Um, and, you know, in the army, they say it's the, the guys under the tent um, or the guys in my son's case in the tank. Um, you know, you, you, you take care of those people first and make sure that you instill a culture that makes them want to take care of the people that they're in charge of. And at the end of the day, if you can do that, again, that ripples out uh, and, and you create that culture where people love and respect one another. And that's really what leadership's all about. I think that idea of the ripple effect is, is so massive. Max or Miles, do you want to share about the ripple that your dad has had on your guys' lives? Um, yeah, I, I can start. Um, I think, you know, we are, I'm very, me and Max are very uh, lucky to have, uh, you know, a father who is so committed to, to something like uh, leadership and something like coaching leadership because um, you may not always get that in such a direct um, way where the, the, the language is used, if that makes sense. And so um, the lessons are very right in front of you. And so I've been able to take those in my life and whether it was going through the challenges that Max is going through or is about to go through at West Point, you know, I was able to call my dad and, and say, hey, dad, how'd you get through it? Or what'd you do? Or whether it was a leadership issue, a classroom issue, a lacrosse issue, et cetera, um, I was able to lean on him. And so, and then use that um, then turn around and help my teammates or help, uh, you know, kids in my company or, or now um, kids that I'm serving with. And so um, kind of that ripple effect, it's, it may not be, have been my idea first and it may not have been, you know, my dad's idea first, but it started somewhere. And so um, those principles are being passed down and, and uh, rippled outwards. So, yeah, I, um, I'd say I've been on a bunch of teams with my dad coaching and, as, as Miles can attest, it's always like, it's very shaky sometimes, but so, when he talks about leadership and when he, uh, like when he speaks in front of our team and I see like the effect it, uh, cause I've, I've heard it and I, it, the effect it's had on me, but more importantly, the effect it has on my teammates. Um, seeing like the leadership, like his knowledge of leadership and being able to have that uh, surround me my whole entire life has been uh, a blessing that I, I will forever be grateful for. And, and one of the things that I saw just watching some videos, Adam, from you is the perspective that you bring to the players. I think it was a video from like eight years ago where you're at some combine talking to the kids on Memorial Day and talking about the fact that I think your wife may have been overseas, but she was helping soldiers that were wounded coming back and the fact that the kids who are at this tournament or all-star game they had the opportunity to play and they were blessed with that it really I think puts perspective on what we get to do with this game of lacrosse and and I'd like Adam for you to if you know what I'm talking about I'd love for you to just pick up from there and if not if you could share just a little bit more about perspective lacrosse as a game and how it affects your life after the lacrosse world yeah that was actually a team Florida combine down in Jupiter Florida and uh, you're exactly right. My wife was out at Launchstool uh, Regional Medical Center uh, with Wounded Warrior Project, um, visiting the flight line as men and women were being brought home um, from, from the battlefield uh, to the United States for further care. And it was, I believe, Mother's Day. <coughs> and um, it, it, for me, you know, I was asked to speak, quite frankly, at the very last minute by the uh, organizer of the tournament. And I was a little hesitant to do so because I'm very reluctant to draw parallels between the military and sports. Um, even though that seems to be a very common thing nowadays, I'm not a combat veteran, so I don't go there. I also don't think that the severity of what we ask of our military men and women can be um, compared to, to, to the games that we ask our young men and women to play. And I will tell you that it's a very common thing. And so all I tried to do was offer perspective, meaning, at that combine, there were 16, 17 year old boys who were trying out for a spot on a, on a statewide uh, all-star team. And the reality was there were 18 and 19 year old boys, not very much older than them, who were being loaded onto large planes after being severely wounded in service to their country to come home and face an uphill battle and a climb. And so for me, it was more or less an opportunity to say, I don't expect you <coughs> to all become 
you know, military uh, people, I don't expect you to go serve your, your country in combat. What I do expect for you to do is have a little perspective and gratitude and grace this weekend as you go through this combine. And if nothing else, thank your mother and father for bringing you here. Pick up your own bag, you know, take, pick up the trash, take care of the place, leave it better than you found it. Don't use this as an excuse. If you didn't make the team, don't point fingers. Don't say it was somebody else. Don't say that the coach screwed you over. Don't say that you got overlooked. Don't say that somebody else's father got him on the team. Just go ahead and use this as a great opportunity to learn and to grow and to become men of character. And that, that was really kind of the, um, I think the, <coughs> the overall message that day. I think that's such an important message and perspective to provide to youth because I think so often there's all those stories or excuses that can rattle through our heads. And until we can get over that and take on that extreme accountability or ownership, we're always going to be brought down. Uh, Miles, I'd love to hear from you. What do you do to take accountability or, or what have you done just over your career to battle some of those stories that may have emerged in the back of your brain, but ultimately been able to fight them to get to where you are today? Um, so I think it was, um, you know, in high school, uh, I was one of the kids that those kids may have been talking about because my dad was very involved in coaching for all-star teams and, and uh, select teams and all this stuff. And so, you know, the first all-star team I made, it was, it might've been, okay, he made it because of his dad. And so, you know, you, you hear that and you might believe it, but then you realize if that's the case, if you did, whatever, you're still here and you still have to perform. And so, um, you know, whether whatever that team, the reason for making it was, was, you know, I still had to play my best. And, you know, it did, uh, I, I was, it, it took, you know, looking in the mirror and, and telling yourself, you know, you're good enough and you, you're working hard. And, and as long as you put in that work, you deserve to be here. Um, and then also, you know, just the support of, of my dad and, and other coaches, um, and not taking that for granted because, you know, you're, you, you may all, it, the stereotype is your, your parents are, are, you know, your number one fan, no matter what my dad is my number one fan, but he's also my number one critic. And, and so I think that was very important in my own development, um, as a player and a leader, because, you know, while he supported me and was, was my biggest fan and was front row at every game, um, you know, I could go to him and ask, okay, like talk to me as coach Silva, not my dad and so that really was something that then led into my college experience where um I went to uh coach Alparisi at West Point basically every day he probably got tired of it and I asked him hey coach what could I do what could I have done better today or, or, or what what is one thing you noticed that I could have done better and um really those conversations I remember more than Miles that was a great goal or a great pass or, or whatever it was the conversations of you know, you didn't perform today, but here's what you can do or here's how you can get better and taking that and internalizing it and working towards it to, you know, become a more well-rounded player. It's such a huge part to be able to constantly learn and also have the humility to say, hey, I'm, I'm not perfect. What can I do to be better? Uh, and, and I also thought it was interesting. You have that relationship with your dad. So, you know, he's your biggest fan, but also you, he can put on that different cap and and also provide you some insight because obviously he has a great lacrosse pedigree. Uh, Adam, for the dads that are watching, how do you balance that fine line of father, coach, and ultimately raise a, the boys that you have so far? I don't know if uh, I'd be able to give a good answer to that one, Ryan. The, uh, um, Miles said it. Uh, Max knows it. Max chose to play defense as I did a long time ago. Um, I am their biggest fan. I'm also their biggest critic. Um, you know, my grandfather was a principal and my mother uh, was probably the most influential person on me as it relates to sports and school. And she instilled upon me a long time or in me a long time ago that uh, the teacher owns the classroom and you're just renting space. And so in our family, when it was a coach making a bad decision or a, a teacher making a bad decision or a principal or an administrator, or whatever it is, the question that I would always ask of my children is, what is your role? I didn't want to hear what the role was of the coach or the, the selector or the administrator. I wanted to know what it was my kids were not doing well or what they were not doing up to speed. I wanted to know whether or not they were being good teammates and they were working hard. And 
<coughs> whether they were, you know, putting forth maximum energy and worrying about the process as opposed to the result. And I will tell you, Ryan, my wife and I have struggled over the years because there have been many times where we felt like we held our kids back because when you look around you, you see so many parents that are their kids' biggest advocates and they forget to remember that their kids are not exactly pure as the driven snow. And so, you know, we would have to bite our, our tongue. We'd have to swallow our pride. Uh, we'd have to, you know, listen to the critics. We'd have to let our kids fail. We'd have to let them miss making teams or, you know, have them playing time or all of that stuff. And I, I don't know that we do anything differently, but going through it as parents, it certainly wasn't easy. Um, I'm very proud of all three of the kids, especially what they've accomplished so far. Uh, and I know that the fact that they've had to endure and go through different trials and tribulations on their own uh, has made them the young men and women that they are. Oh, Adam, thank you for, for sharing that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you wouldn't necessarily do anything different. And I think that's part of being present. We live forward into the futures that we can and we can create. And it sounds like you've done a great job and really seeing the boys right now, I'm so impressed. Uh, and Max, I want to throw a, a question to you. How do you have, or more of, when, when you hear those stories, people saying something that you may not agree with, what do you do to be able to overcome that? And also, what do you tell either your, your buddies or the younger kids, the next generation of lacrosse players, what would you tell them to do so that ultimately they can follow their dreams and play at the highest level? Um, one thing is that I, uh, my brother definitely took a lot more of that than than I did because um when they when they were saying that Miles made teams because of his family or something he also uh happened to lead West Point in goal scoring and then go off and be drafted in the MLL so he kind of silenced that and so there wasn't much to talk about me um and then one thing is that there there always will be somebody that's talking um that's all that's somebody that doesn't agree with what you're doing um the the one thing that I usually think of is I just like think of my family um I kind of just think what's the most important thing to me um and then I I use that as motivation oh Max well thank you I I think family is such a big deal as well and we often see that the the best leaders have something that's really close to home that's that motivator and that that one goal they're able to look to. And that way, whenever any noise comes in, they're focused on that. And that focus and that intention and the activity that leads to that produces great results. Uh, I know we're coming up on, on time right now. Is there anything that any of you would like to say or add to the conversations we've had so far? Not me specifically. Uh, just uh, to point out, Ryan, that uh, this is Army Navy week for Max. Uh, he's got, uh, they're hosting West Point on Saturday. And then next weekend, the 24th, which is Miles' birthday, uh, it's the, the big fellas. Uh, it's down in Annapolis, right, Miles? Yeah. Army Navy lacrosse, April 24th. So it's uh, the big uh, 10 days for us. Woo. Well, well, best of luck, Max. I hope it all goes well. <laughs> And then Adam Miles, I know that you'll be cheering on uh, everyone as well. I, I do have a question for Miles from John Walker. He says, uh, Miles, who's a better player, Adam or Steve Heller? <laughs> I'm going to have to go with uh, my uncle Steve. Uh, he's definitely, I think, the better player. And um, I think anybody that knows uh, my dad and my uncle Steve can uh, would agree with me on that. So assists don't win games is is the best advice I ever got from him. So um, <laughs> that, that definitely have to go with my Uncle Steve. Oh, that's so fun. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to be on the Leadership Institute today. We're going to be cheering you on, Max, and uh, Miles will cheer you on as well when we see you lace up. Uh, Adam, good luck to you in your season. Hope the boys continue to grow and be successful. You guys are all such phenomenal leaders. We can't thank you enough for being a part of this community and sharing your perspective. Thanks, Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so Thank much.